The amazing thing about the Peak District are the traces left by the activity of people digging down, building up, extracting, burying. The activity of people here is so concentrated, so ancient and so layered. A working quarry is next to a disused one that's been totally reclaimed by nature. And they, they leave an incredible scar in the landscape. All these places can be a monument. They're not necessarily memorials, but pieces of evidence which we can use to get closer to our past. My name is Liana Lang and I'm this year's artist in residence at the Worksworth Festival. I'm very interested in statuary and monuments in my work. The materials that I use often have a reference or relevance to the monumental or to the history of sculpture. I've started thinking about other dimensions of commemoration what different kinds of material representation are there to try and tell a historical story. The texture of the material has its own power to narrate its history. Marble, bronze, wood, wax, so much of what it means is already there within it, and I love that. So I like there to be a multitude of different materials that tell these types of stories, whether that's a natural history or an industrial process. Of course, many of the stories are almost completely lost, but these objects can hint at what we don't know or leave a space for us to imagine. The story around the Nine Ladies Stone Circle is that there were nine ladies dancing on the Sabbath and they were turned to stone in punishment. That's presumably a medieval story. It has nothing at all to do with the Neolithic origins of the stone circle. So we have actually no idea what the nine ladies were really for. I think of them as similar to headstones, keeping loved ones close and remembered. But that's just my own projection. Absence of knowledge is something that runs throughout human history. There's this huge gap into which we can explore and imagine. That sense of exploration is what drives me in my work. When I'm making cement pours, I think about lava flows and strata of geologic time, as if I'm really making marble. Maybe art is good for that. I, I hope it's good for that, for imagination and ritual magic. Worksworth is such a fascinating place to me. 
you start to scratch the surface and there's so much to discover. I really loved Terry's lead mine in his back garden, which he beautifully preserved and presented. He has artifacts of bones and kettles and hobnail boots that were all retrieved from the mine once it had been reopened. It's so beautifully preserved and amazing how he worked to make it accessible again. You could feel so close to these lives, all this great effort and sweat and it was cold and dark down there in the tunnel. All that lead that is probably still somewhere down there somewhere below us in various bits of rock. Bits that they've missed. The lead is one of the materials that I'm using here, which has a biography. I've got these two wonderful rolls from the roof of St. Mary's Church in Worksworth, which has been standing in the middle of dust and noise of quarrying and mining for centuries. I'm very excited to have that material to work with. That's so not what I was expecting it to look like. Lead is a sort of magical material, indestructible and pliable, hard and soft almost fluid in your hands, poisonous. You can manipulate it, you can change its shape, you can roll it, fold it, crease it, and always smooth it back out again. There is something about those properties that relate it to thinking about time and memory. I visited maybe 30 sites since I came to Worksworth, and many of them are really amazing. But if I had to pick a favorite, I would probably pick Harbour Rocks. Mining there goes back to the Romans, and there's also an active quarrying company still working right next to it. So when you're in this beautiful place with hovering kestrels, you have this massive industrial noise going on. Further up the rocks, there's a cave and a chair carved in stone with an amazing view. Daniel Defoe came here in 1726 and met um, a lady who um, lived in the cave with her husband and five children. She invited him in and so he describes what the cave looked like. He said it was poor but quite comfortable and they cut a uh, um, a chimney into the ceiling to um, allow the smoke to escape from the fire. To him it was really quite strange that people would live in a cave, just as uh, I suppose it is to us quite incredible to imagine living in here. And when they excavated the cave um, at the turn of the last century, they discovered all sorts of traces of people going back to the Ice Age. So people have been occupying this, this cave in various ways for uh, 10,000 years. The scars and the remnants and the ruins of things. It's surprising how many things are still there when you go looking for them. Each thing individually has its own story, but when you put them side by side, they tell a story of continuous effort and aspiration. And we are still here, still digging and building, and still wondering about things.